Car Crash. Okay, hi, welcome back, everyone. It's been a while. Welcome to the Kailacht Car Crash podcast. Um, a lot has happened. Uh, we yeah. are still alive. Uh, still alive. Welcome back to my co curator, Sanna. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so we finished up the last exhibition, Beauty, which was a huge success. And we were really happy with the exhibition and the amount of people that showed up. And uh, yeah, it was really the launch of our exhibition space. Um, and now we are planning our second exhibition called um, Bruxelles, uh, where we invited female artists living in Brussels or working in Brussels uh, to participate in the exhibition. Um, sadly enough, we have another COVID wave, so we had to postpone uh, the exhibition, but which again gives us a lot of time to get to know our artists really well and uh, have enough time to build relationships instead of just hosting an exhibition. And uh, the first artist that we selected and that we're having a talk with on our podcast is Masha. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Hey, guys. hey guys, I'm happy to see you. Hi. Hey, thank you for the invitation. You're very yeah, we're welcome. really happy to see you. I'm really, I'm really excited about uh, this podcast with you because um, I know you have a lot of things to say. So uh, let's start it, I think. Okay, let's start it. Okay, so can you uh, please introduce yourself? Um, tell us uh, where do you live uh, uh, and where are you from and what do you do right now? Um, so my name is Maria Derkacheva. Uh, I live in Brussels um, and yeah, I'm an artist, but I, I work in the construction sector also. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. And where are you from? I, I, I'm from Russia, from Moscow. Okay. All right, from Moscow. From Ooh. Moscow. Ooh. That's interesting, always. <laughs> Moscow. Okay, cool. And so uh, um, you are from Moscow, but now you live in Brussels. So you obviously yeah. moved a while ago. How long ago was that? Uh, I moved uh, six years ago to, to Belgium, but I live, uh, I've been living in uh, Brussels two years now. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. And then why did and you, you decide to move to Belgium? Uh, because I met a guy and he was Belgian, so and I, I moved to live with him. Okay. And so, live with him? Uh, yeah. The love, the love stories is always stories. like this. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you study Dutch. Yeah. When you came here. Yeah, I did. Was it hard? Um, not, not so hard. Not so hard. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna start with a with a uh, question from from your artist statement. So in your artist statement, you talk about childhood. Um, what can uh, what, what can tell us about that? How, how maybe maybe tell us uh, how the art uh, was in your uh, childhood. Um, as I remember myself, I always like to draw, and of course, when I was child, I just I like to make stories and draw it. I don't know about uh, princess or like fairy tale or something. And then uh, when I began to study in school, uh, we had an uh, art le les lesson, mm -hmm. and I liked I liked it very much. And my teacher she said like maybe you should continue this direction. Mm -hmm. And then when I was twelve, I began to study uh, uh, in uh, art school. And then I realized that it's something what I wanted, what I wanted to do. So and how, how is that feeling then? Why do you realize that? Is that something that you uh, thought, oh my God, I'm free here? Or why do you like art? I just like, I, I just like to do it. I was enjoying the process and I've, I found it also interesting. And I also met the people who uh, um, inspired inspired me to do that. Yeah, I felt me very uh, comfortable there. 
so you started started studying art while you were still in Moscow. Yeah, not actually in Moscow when I was a child. I lived with my mother and it was um, Moscow region. Mm -hmm. It was Sergiev Passat. I don't know if it's, uh, um, yeah, if someone knows this place. But um, yeah, it was in Russia. Okay, and then uh, did you do any higher degrees or any more anything more specific with art while you were in uh, Russia? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, after my um, school or uh, middle bar, I would say it in mm -hmm. English, uh, I um, entered um, Moscow Art Industrial University, and I graduated in 2012. Uh, and my I, yeah, I got a master in um, space space design it's mm -hmm. actually it's not like uh, interior design but it's like more wild or uh, white <laughs> mm -hmm. more uh, white huh? mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah just organizing the spaces different spaces public spaces also um, leaf spaces also mm -hmm. exter exterior and why did you decide to do architecture? Uh, yeah, because I, I like art, but I also like to apply it functionally. You want to have a more direct impact on people instead of yeah, art, which yeah. may be more um, yeah. secondary uh, in yeah. an effect on people, while architecture is something they can yeah. actually use and, and yeah. live in. Yeah. So how does that relate to like the very um, emotional, personal side that you're touching on? Because architecture is like quite more rigid than functional and mathematical. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I work in the construction sector and then uh, I also can say that it's like kind of kind of design kind of uh, art for me but it's like i more limited by boundaries for technical functional everything but when i do my art artwork i feel me uh, free so i like all these things but my art it's like i just give a free rein to my hand and i can express my emotions sometimes um, sometimes i have feeling that yeah, sometimes I have feelings that uh, I want something when I feel something that I cannot even express what is what it is. Sometimes I won't be somewhere, I don't know where. And I think that those spaces, what I create for my artwork, is those spaces what I miss and I even cannot describe it. So mm -hmm. uh, my work, it's... Um, Inspired by inspired by space and architecture, but it's more abstract. So for my artwork, I feel more free than for my job. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can you understand what, what I, I can yeah. really understand. It. It's very similar to me. No, it's yeah. like art gives you the freedom to express yeah. things that it's not possible through yeah. architecture only. It's like an uh, a step that makes something less functional but more expressive. Yeah, that's true. And I also uh, very uh, interested in uh, psychology. So mm -hmm. not so long time ago, I began to learn more things about that, about like my uh, inside world. So and I could say that maybe uh, the spaces what I draw, it's like my world, world inside me, my emotions. Uh, yeah, just just try to express my my emotional. Uh, yeah, but maybe maybe can you get a little bit more specific? Which emotions do you have? Do you have like sometimes I'm gonna like start from me. Sometimes when I feel um, when I feel obsessed, very upset because of the world. I'm really sad be because of like what's happening in the world. It's not like very personal. It's like, it's not that my friend told me something that I didn't like and I, I get upset, but just from the whole world. So sometimes this feeling uh, turns out into the colors and paint on my canvas. Yeah. And 
and that and th at that time I actually really mean it. My uh, pa uh, my paintings are uh, much better when I am upset than when I'm happy because when I'm happy it's like ah, I don't think what I what I'm doing. But when I'm uh, upset, I'm I really think like oh, I really want to do something to, just like to to create something new that nobody knows and and so on. Oh, no, uh, no, uh, it's actually not about the things what happening in the world or outside, but it's about what happening inside me because uh, sometimes I feel like I don't understand myself and sometimes I have a... In which feeling. situations do you don't understand yourself? Uh, for example, I do something and then um, I'm not happy with that and I even cannot... Uh, yeah, I cannot explain why. So and that's why I began to learn myself better. And my artwork, it's like more learning me inside than than uh, world things. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same dilemma? Um, well, my my work isn't that personal per se. It's not very autobiographical and, and not really researching into my own emotions anymore i think and i'm actually the reverse as you son i need this positive outlook on life and work and the world for me to be creative because when i okay. start worrying like you're saying like when you get frustrated with the world or something then mm -hmm. that's the moment those are the moments that i can't work oh okay yeah i have to some music because and start cannot... dancing and then i'm getting to the flow of energy that I need to create okay so when you are upset you ca you cannot think or um it's more that because, I because I know well there was this yeah. uh there was this program on tv yesterday with uh, a famous Belgian painter um and he was uh also saying the same thing of like I need there are very few moments that I I am in the mindset to create work like it has to be the right moment because otherwise uh, nothing really comes out and i have the same thing of like it, it he also creates the situations he needs to be productive and it has yeah. it's very difficult to create those conditions for him to work in and i'm the same i'm like when a moment really strikes that i know of like okay this is the moment i can work right now it's very uh rare it, to actually create something for me there's a lot of thought process that goes on behind the scenes and then when all of that thinking has processed and and is in sort of this more concrete state then i can get into the mindset and then sometimes a moment of of creative energy arrives and then i can use all that information in my work and then it takes like an hour two three four to make a painting but it's only then that there is this ideal state to create something. Okay, that's actually really interesting that everybody, all artists, has their own moments to, to create something. Or their like, own feelings. For example, um, let's talk, um, wait, which artist is interesting into, do you know any artist they are like, has very special moments to create something like boys well, with these happenings um oh, i don't know about boys because he his happenings aren't the only thing he made but i know that uh Saitumbli had the same thing also of like he spent a lot of time looking and 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 taking in his world and his poetry and all of these things that he uses in his work but then he also had these very um he had these moments where he could work and they were like two three four times a year and then for the rest of the time he just didn't work and i was like oh so like it's not that weird that an artist doesn't always that an artist isn't always productive yeah it's also like uh do you know uh about the thing that Dali did he put the spoon in his mouth and he waited till the moment that he was falling asleep. But because when you fall in sleep, 
you do like this and the spoon because he had a spoon he wake up himself and he memorized the thing that he saw when okay. when you are already fallen asleep uh -huh. this is also like a crazy thing to yeah, start that's your creating the conditions that you need to make art yeah yeah for example me uh, uh, also i need to look into google maps or other maps like scrolling and scrolling i don't I, i don't copy them maybe but i'm just i need to see the forms a lot of the forms and then i can start but yeah that's i think the process that goes behind the scenes that was what, is what i was talking about of like i do a lot of research and i read a lot of stories and i make a lot of sketches and 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 collect imagery and and do all these more technical things or, or uh -huh. um, theoretical things before I start start my work. But even then when all of that is finished, which by itself takes up more time than actually creating the work, actually creating the work, like taking a brush to the canvas or, or taking a piece of clay and start working with it. That's uh -huh. those moments of actual creation that something materializes. Those are, uh, are more difficult to create and and they are uh more special moments because it's they they are very brief and it has to be a special moment to actually work because we've all i think had that feeling where we start making work because we have to and start drawing or something and then you just feel that it's not working and you're like but i have to make something and then at the end of it you look at the result and it's shit and you're like fuck what happened <laughs> Do you have those moments, Masha, when uh, when you draw something and you think, yeah. oh fuck, no? Yeah, of course, but I never draw something just to draw or to because I have to draw or because I have to make art, and also because um, yeah, your work it's probably it's probably uh, inspired by things like maps or I don't know um, or another things, but because uh, my work my artwork uh inspired by my feelings about my inside world so i just uh i yeah i just feel sometimes like uh, yeah okay now i feel something that i probably want to express and then i just take a uh, uh, paper and pencil and it's finished huh? so i mean it's start get started it's much more intuitive than i think yes, maybe much more in my practice yeah Okay. Uh, and, and I also work a lot uh, with architect architecture and construction, so I always, in those things, I always have like all these spaces in my in my head. Uh, yeah, so I I don't need like extra. I don't I don't need to look for things somewhere in internet or looking for something. Just uh, I have it always in me. Mm -hmm. Just, okay. Yeah. So you're from Russia and. Uh, when we look at Russian arch architecture, it's um, very strict and, and kind of brutal, which was influenced very much by the Soviet Union. Um, has that changed at all today? And, and does Russian architecture influence your work? Uh, no, our Russian uh, architecture influence not my work at all. Uh, yeah, now it's also like uh, more modern architecture architect, architecture in the, in the, in russia but um, it it influences it, it doesn't influence on on my work at all but what, what do you think so in, i know um, because of lithuania also and and i i have also been in russia um, you can really see how the uh, architecture is just the same because of soviet union so it was, uh, I don't know exactly whose idea was to build the same uh, buildings, but okay. So what do you think about actually about the, uh, about that architect as as an artist? Do you think that this is something special for for a, for a country? But uh, what are you talking about? Are you talking about this uh, five uh, five five, five, five levels, uh, buildings? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's like really Russian architecture. So it's like just a, a peri peri period, 
period. Yeah. yeah period. Uh, it began when it was uh, President Khrushchev. So it 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 was create. Yeah, actually, I think this idea to to build a uh, cheap and fast and give um, uh, apartments for people, places for people to live. There's well. Yeah, okay, it's also like uh, part of Russian culture, but there are other things. There is very beautiful architecture in yeah, Russia. Why, why I'm actually asking this question? Because uh, it's very interesting how I'm feeling by that. When I'm going to Russia or Lithuania, I'm thinking about actually those people, even by the architecture, there's like a boundary of freedom you know there's no f like no freedom to breathe like you don't you cannot have a house that is different from your neighbor or something so yeah. because you talked because you talked about the freedom in your artist statement i wanted to relate this uh, into another question like what do you think about this freedom thing yeah. what's this thing for you what how how the artists actually um live with the freedom or something how the people live with freedom yeah okay uh, i will answer for the question about this uh, russian architecture archi archi architecture archi <laughs> cut it architecture, <laughs> cut it. <laughs> architecture. Uh, yeah probably when it was soviet union so it was idea like uh, everybody have to be equal and you cannot be different from your neighbor or something. Yeah, exactly. It's something to do with uh, economical things because yeah. Yeah, it was not, wait, uh, how I would say it? Okay, because in, in Russia, people got free apartments before. So you work and then uh, you can, you have like a wait list and then you can get apartment maybe in, I don't know, in. In, in few years or if you like young family then for sure you will get apartment for free but of course it's not possible to give apartment for everybody if it's like very special architecture or like it's very luxury things so it was created like just boxes 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 um yeah to to give it to people it's the things what was created because it was necessary to create it but it also can express like mood of that period and now it's also like a part of culture so it's ugly but it's also a little bit beautiful maybe it's something for the uh, uh your of um for your uh, review review uh tema like beauty beauty things so it's like yeah it's ugly but it's also special beautiful. Yeah. yeah yeah i actually i have the kind of i don't like thing with this, those blocks yeah when i go back to lithuania those blocking of of those of the architecture i also saw the maps yeah uh, in, and even even on the map you see like also blocks like yeah uh, square 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 then square 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 it's like this they are all built next to each other they are all the same but at the same time it's actually you can also see the beauty in that yeah that's true that's true yeah. actually I, I i was i never thought about that so for me it was always like ugly things and now when we are talking about that i just realized that yeah it's also like something special right? it's like beauty in the ugliness yeah it's yeah it's nice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. And about my about my artwork. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that I would like to escape from all these things. So maybe that feelings what I have what I have inside myself sometimes. Maybe it was like created in my childhood when I lived exactly in one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. Maybe now. Yeah. But I I like freedom. So maybe my work. It's like my traveling in the Mm -hmm. in the places where everything uh, is possible mm -hmm. yeah everything is possible i believe that everything is possible yeah that's uh mm -hmm. that's 
what I also try to express in my work. But my work it also depends how I feel right now. And do yeah, actually, most... do you actually ever thought about three D uh, works like uh, installations or sculptures? Yeah, of course. Uh, I I work with three D modeling, so I do it for I do it for my work. Uh, but you do it on computer, so it stays. I know that is 3D uh, modeling on on a program, but it stays 2 uh, 2D because it's computer. Yeah. And if you print it, it's still 2D. But I mean, like really 3D things that you can yeah, touch. Yeah, I like I like it very much. So we were talking about that already. So I always try to uh, give like influence on your work also that I always said like maybe a Sandra try something like 3D yeah I, I, I like it I find it very interesting uh, maybe I would ever do something like that actually I had a long pause in my work so you, you know that now I'm just beginner so I even don't have like um, atelier or something i just have my notebook and pencil and that that's all what i use for my work uh, but i'm i'm gonna uh, develop in this direction uh yeah maybe uh, maybe i would make something like uh, 3d like installation mm -hmm. or but i also like uh, you said that like 3d modeling is like 3d but it also like it stayed 2d on the paper mm -hmm. And anyway, I find it interesting. Um, maybe I would like to do something like animation, you know, mm -hmm. 3D model. But you also can move it. You also can uh, like like Dylan did uh, 3D yeah. gallery. Yeah, I like it very oh, much. Oh, actually, actually, his work uh, behind he. Yeah. Behind him is also 3D modeling of uh, he made it uh, uh, by computer. Uh, seriously? Yeah. It took a lot of work. That was the first lockdown uh, project of mine. <laughs> um, so we were talking about like Russian architecture and um, and how it's very rigid and 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 the same for everybody, which I think is very interesting. That you're kind of doing the opposite with your work, which is also related to architecture. Yours is very free and individual and and looks for a place on its own instead of being the same uh, tie, being the same form, being for productivity and, and, and economic questions, which I think is really yeah. interesting, seeing as especially that you came from Russia and that you're kind of fighting back against the experiences that, mm, that you had because of architecture there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's really. I think that's so interesting when you are come uh, from the boundaries. So you have some boundaries in yourself, and you see yeah, the yeah. boundaries around you. And we, when you became free, it's like the feeling is like it just you cannot even describe the feeling. Is yeah. that true? So, yeah, that's true. Uh, but also, I wanted to say that. Um, architectural and uh, interior everything it, it's like it have to be uh, cor correct huh? so if you make a uh, like building and something wrong even if it's a special form anyway it has to be it, it has to be correct done otherwise it will not stay huh? ah. but in, in my work I have like very strange forms that they would yeah I mean they would never exist in real yeah. and that yeah. like and it's like it's straight forms but it's also like very uh, natural bio forms that they uh, uh, mix all together like mm -hmm. uh, constructions mix with nature with the yeah psychology is that not yeah psychology also, also. Mm -hmm. Okay. But because it also all relates back to like, um, because somehow you told me about that architecture that you met and how he described architecture or being Yeah, architect. so I, I met an architecture uh, an when architect? I studied in Luca, an architect, fuck. So um, when I was studying in Luca, uh, I met him. Uh, 
it was uh, how his name from green light uh, uh, Nicolas. Nicolas yeah so I asked him like oh my god you are architect and I was so happy to meet him because I'm really interested in architect uh, architecture and I I was like um, asking uh can you please describe what it means to be an architect and he said to me uh to be an architect is like to be a bug in a box you you have the wings but you cannot fly so yeah. he told me like uh you you think that you are artistic you make your art yeah like you you draw uh, like crazy buildings or something but you cannot make them because of the uh, boundaries because because of the rules of industry industry and so on and so on and uh, so do you agree master with that i'm completely agree. so uh, i liked all very much i like technology very much so uh, yeah very much but i also like to escape sometimes and i think that those sketches it's my it's the way to escape from this boundary from this box it's about finding a balance between like productivity and reality and 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 fantasy yeah, yeah and fantasy and, and expression and those kind of things expression yeah mm -hmm. maybe and it's also about okay maybe we could compare like architecture like um uh, uh, if we talk about psychology, so sometimes um, we have a feelings, we have like emotions, but it's all bundled by um, rules or by our uh, own boundary or something, mm -hmm. and try to escape from from that. Maybe it's. I also think there's some... a beautiful metaphor in there of like because. Uh, I'm also very interested in like emotions and and the way we express them and for example and and the cultural boundaries that we have. For example, in Greek times, you could have these bacchanalia where you could express your frustration and anger and 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 uh, have a real cathartic moment of expressing all of your these emotions. And in today's society, you can you can't just scream whenever you want to. You can't just cry whenever you feel like. It, there are these very um these cultural structures that dictate how we are supposed to feel and how we are supposed to show our emotions which you could also compare to architecture of like uh, architecture dictates how we live and how we move through a building and how a yeah. building functions and it, uh, so culture is the same kind of thing where we have to um fit our emotions into these functional places that culture has built for us. And then you, on the one hand, work with architecture and culture. And then on the other hand, you take those things, you take culture and art and you take architecture to uh, show these emotional sides. And it's also, I think, really interesting. Also, at the same time, like you were saying, Sonna, that buildings, uh, you can build these, or you can draw these crazy buildings and not make them. But in your case, Masha, I think it's also very interesting because you can feel that um, the drawings are based on architecture, but on the same yeah. time, there's no basis in reality. Like the yeah. things you draw are not, you need 16 dimensions to create what's on those drawings. And I think that's also really interesting that you take it even further than reality with your drawings. Yeah, uh, I'm completely agree with you. Hmm. Yeah. It's, um, and yeah. sorry, I said but, a lot. Maybe but, but, it's a lot to process. Then, maybe. But then, uh, if we talk wait, about. I, sorry, I didn't get the question. So uh, I completely agree with uh, Dylan what he said, but I didn't get uh, what was the question. Was I don't think there was a question. It, no, I think it was, was just me talking. Was... Yeah. But I completely agree with you. Uh, you just explained what I also uh, thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we are talking about the boundaries, what's your boundary? Do you have 
personal boundaries that you cannot escape or maybe you are working on to yeah. escape yeah uh i don't know if it's boundary or uh, yeah probably it's boundary because of things whatever happened or so or and you and you even don't know yourself why so sometimes you cannot act or you cannot do the things what you want to do because of something mm -hmm. but what is that you you don't know because you forgot or you didn't know that there is like link between the things and uh, recently uh, i'm busy to um, accept myself uh, how i am so before i will always wanted to be like a perfect like uh perfect how i look perfect what i say my language has to be perfect everything has to be perfect and then i was bothered because of those things and i couldn't express myself because i thought oh maybe it's not good enough maybe uh, people will say that it's something like ha 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 or i don't know so and now i'm just trying to um uh, i'm just trying to accept myself the way i am Mm -hmm. doesn't matter is it good or is it bad wherever i can show myself to people and how, and how you do it uh What's honestly uh, honestly um i'm busy with psychologue mm -hmm. uh, i do a lot of practice uh, like meditations and special things mm -hmm. actually yeah. i could say that i'm reborn in my uh, 32 years old okay 31 i was 31 to uh, that moment um yeah so i just yeah i also can say actually i started to paint again at the moment when i began my psychological things and then uh i can say that when i started with this with this psychologue it's like i opened new world like i lived and i didn't know that you can live different and since that moment i feel me absolutely different it's like yeah it's like open door somewhere and probably those spaces it's also those places what what i open mm -hmm. so yeah. all this how it is think so if you see my pictures you can see that there are a lot of lines a lot of things yeah, it's actually what happened inside me, and I accept it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. It don't have to be like very beautiful. Yeah, I also uh, I was afraid to draw because I thought maybe my art is not good enough. Maybe uh, I have to create something so special that people would be so interesting in that, and then I may to show it to people. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be I don't know Dali or Picasso or wherever to draw. But then I realized that, no, I don't have to be like them. I just can be myself. And I, maybe my pictures, they are not perfect, but I just show it to people and it's okay. So I was really surprised that I was selected for, those, uh, for this um, exhibition. So it seems that my work, like, like it is, can be interesting for someone. And yeah, it's also like sort of acceptation of yourself. Mm -hmm. But you, do you did something something special with this uh, psychological or, or is it just talking with each other? No, it's not talking. It's like also a special meditation, but also like neurography. I find it's very interesting. Uh, it's like also pictures what you create, but okay. You have like uh, things that happen like regularly with you so you do something but no it doesn't work you do it again and again doesn't work so and here's like uh, how you say it in english uh, like uh, a chain of events uh, yeah so it's yeah yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. and you think why why is it like this mm -hmm. and it it means that we have like special neuro chains in the in the brains so and our reaction for 
some things. It's like how those chains work. work. And then uh, it's, it exists one method to change it. Actually, it's like really a pat patented. So it's like, uh, it's not like just a fantasy or like esoteric or mysterious things. It's like real, uh, real, uh, psychiatrist psychological me method so you can change the work of those uh narrow uh chains in your in your in your brains wow. how how do you do that you just um, try to bring these feelings outside so you take a paper and you give yourself like one minute and you begin to write down all those things what what you uh, would make you uh, like excite uh, like uh, gives you anxiety or like uh, give, gives gives you stress and then you write it all everything down and then you have these feelings again and you just have to do like a few lines just like one two three and you have a lot of uh, 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 ang angles angles yeah angles and then you have to make all those uh, angles those smooth smoothly smooth yeah, like you smooth them down. yeah and then a uh, special technique that you make it all smoothly and then you also have to bring all those lines um, uh, outside of your of your paper so it means that you uh, um, it means that you give a link with like real life and then uh, you have to color it you give you, you color parts of your picture with different colors and then you uh, have to draw extra lines it's like special i don't know how to say it even in russian but it's like waves mm -hmm. it, it means something i don't know exactly what so and then you uh, you got again angles so you have to make these angles again smoothly and then uh, when it's done, you also have to find the place for circles in, in those pictures. And then it also like give you balance or something. And then you got again angles and then you have to make it smoothly again. So, and I don't know how does it work. I didn't believe in that actually, but I tried two times and I had two problems in, in my life. And like, I thought doesn't work with me. I did it two times and things are changed i swear it's like i don't know how does it work but seriously okay i'm gonna draw some of those uh, because uh, yeah. to you know to realize all my shit in my head <laughs> because i don't know i don't know if it's something to do with this art but <laughs> okay maybe we will it. No, but it's oh, very interesting no. that like you're using art as therapy. Yeah, it's like uh, therapy. Yeah, right. Um, but like if we go back to your sketches, um, they're, as we mentioned, quite complex. And um, I'd like to know how do you start, uh, how do you start constructing them? How do you determine their composition? Uh, everything just by my feeling so i just take even it's even doesn't matter what i have in my hands is it a pencil or is it like marker or is it just very uh, i'll say simple things and i give like uh, uh freedom to my hand just begin to draw 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 and then and then i just feel aha uh -huh, here I need a line here. I need uh, like a spot here. I need this, and then like layers. But actually, it's like layers. First layer, and then I see, okay, here it has to be something. I miss here something. Okay, and here's maybe now too heavy. This corner is too heavy, and just yeah, just like follow my feelings. That's all. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, with those layers, I do exactly the same. Would you are are you working with layers, Dylan? Um, like building up. Yeah, kind of. 
uh, more so recently, uh, there's always this idea of layers in my, when I'm making it, but I don't uh, emphasize that process, or maybe I do. Um, I don't think of them as layers. I think of them as steps and adding on to them and uh, not kind of stacking one on top of the other, but like um, taking like clay and molding it and then molding it again and then and then taking it back some more and revealing things that were there before and then pushing some things back. And it's it's more of a collage than than layering for me, I think. Actually, everything like this, like also layers or collaging or something, I I see it like like a travel when you can like a travel in time. Like you can come, you can go into the past or into the future or I don't know where, but it's always, I don't know, there's really no boundaries when you creating, when you create your composition, I think. Mm -hmm. You can do mm -hmm. things out and you can add something and you can yep. repeat and repeat and repeat. It's like endless travel to something that you search, but there is a something that you never find yeah, you don't yeah. don't you have don't you have the same feeling when you like create you did a painting or a drawing or a sketch whatever you do and you did it but it's like shit it's not enough i need to search something further and you search for something that you will never find because yeah i think you find yourself when you are dead it's very interesting what you're saying right now it's like Two, two things what I could was it a question for me or for Dilemma? No, it's no for you. It's even not a question, it's just like I'm saying that. Uh, yeah, that uh, I find it's very interesting what you say. Why? Because um, if we talk about composition, about work, so sometimes I have this like endless feelings to add, 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 add things, but sometimes I feel like okay, now I really have to stop. Now it's enough. So I cannot touch it anymore, otherwise it will be, uh, yeah, it will be, uh, yeah, uh, not good anymore. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I have the, those feelings that I have to add, 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 like make it more perfect or something. But uh, if it talks, again, talking about psychology, uh, sometimes I have feelings like there's something before, for example, if I hear music, then I got the feeling that there is something that I don't, I cannot express. It's like something what doesn't exist. I miss something. I miss something. So you said like when you're drawing, you miss some. You always miss something. You're trying to find the things what you can add. So sometimes I have those feelings that I miss something, and I even don't know what it could be, what could happen to satisfy this missing. You understand? So. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, it's also you can see it on those sketches. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, my question was also how it's maybe it, it's maybe also a tip for ev for our listeners how uh, artists need to understand when your work is finished. What do you think? For me, it's just again feelings. Uh, as I said sometimes it takes time and sometimes you feel like no 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 don't touch it anymore it's 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 done just so it's like very this. straightforward for you like you know when something you never doubt like oh is it finished now maybe i should put it away for a couple of days and then get back to it and see what if i need to do more or not or is it really like you're drawing and then at some point it's like okay now i have to stop and you actually stop and and don't it, it different so sometimes i feel like now i really stop because it's done sometimes i feel like okay i will just leave it like this and i will see it uh, in a few days it's like this kind also and sometimes uh, it's like i always like, yeah okay it's one day it would uh it would done but it takes like longer time to to get ready with that mm. I don't know, I have a completely different way to understand when my, my own work is done. I have two things, two, two 
rules. I don't know, maybe it's boundary, uh, something like boundary for me, I don't know. But I have two rules. First rule is uh, like the works of Malevich or uh, Kandinsky works. It's like they are, they are um, uh, making the forms, but they are like, uh, how to say that in English? Shit. Balance. Like, uh, uh, balancing, yeah, balancing with each other. And it's like with ki uh, kilos, you know, uh, kilograms. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's too much, here's too less or something. And it's really, in my head, it's not, not like very visual, but in my head it's working really with um, kilograms. Yeah. Like there's too much or there's too less. And then when I um, get the perfect balance in my eyes, I realize, okay, I'm getting close to it. But also the, the second rule, if the colors are not in a good, um, uh, perfect uh, level, and also they are not like a uh, complete um, flowing with each other or something in a good in a good uh, way or something then uh, i i keep changing them keep uh, working until i have perfect uh, combination of colors so colors and forms is for me everything if i don't have balance with them my work's not finished but is it not about feelings then no i don't feel them it's not like feeling it's like knowing that it's hmm. like a, it's like but a math there's no mathematical by... approach to what you're saying. I think it's more of a like a personal aesthetic uh, sensibility that has to do with what you're saying. Yeah, maybe, but uh, like you I'm... can you can balance a kilogram to a kilogram. That's not that's that's scientific. That's how gravity works. But like the balance between colors and 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 forms and everything you're describing is something very personal and and emotional and intuitive i don't know i don't feel you, you understand i don't feel emotions by that no it's not I don't about feel anything. it's not about like feeling sad or happy or something it's about something internal of yourself it's not something that that can be measured externally to an ob uh, objective point it's very subjective it's subjective to you what you're feeling because what is a balance for you isn't the same as a balance for me for example yeah. okay maybe i don't know i thought all the time i thought okay oh my god i have the problem with my feelings because i feel nothing for me it's like math you're a robot like really like a robot like a like a math it's like like you see you see my work uh, behind me like those two lines are just completely the same lines. I made them from um, warm, um, like hot, hot uh, glue on on a on a surface, and then I printed them, but then on different ways. And I I like repeated and repeated like two centimeters uh, above, maybe more. Uh, down yeah, or maybe like different. subjective to how you feel is the best way to show it and when you feel it's finished so it's very yeah, not I agree. it's about balance which is something you can never create pure balance also so it's very subjective okay oh oh my god maybe i have feelings <gasps> no i'm not saying you have feelings i'm saying that you're human Yes. But maybe That's you're a sociopath without feelings. That's already good news for me. That's great. <laughs> okay. My next question for you is, um, maybe let's talk about uh, the inspiration. Yeah. Uh, do you have some artists who inspirate uh, your uh, work? Um, and why? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I was always interested Actually, yeah, my, my favorite artist was always, um, I was always inspired by Impressionist. So, mm -hmm. because it's also everything, everything about these feelings and it's also about boundaries that uh, it was time when 
people said like we don't want to follow the rules anymore we want to do something special and it don't have to be like a perfect or very realistic so we will just try to convey the character or like feelings about the spaces places i liked it uh, i was very i was always interested in that and now uh, yeah because i also in, interested in architecture and constructions and technology i'm very inspired by uh, uh, artists like Olafur Ellison or Neri uh, Oxfam I, mean, I find it very uh, well, i like when it's like yeah actually i like art i like technology and i also like uh, nature it's like all a little bit combined i find it yeah i find it very interesting and, yeah uh, all for who was the second artist, uh, Olafar Eliasson and? Nere Oxfam. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, that one I is so it. good one. Uh, you can, you can um, watch a movie uh, documentary about her on Netflix. It's very interesting to see how she built the whole industry, uh, like uh, amazing big building for all the ar artists they are making. Um, artworks and they are all um inspired by by a lot yeah uh, uh, how it's called by a lot green green building and like mm -hmm. uh everything what biological thing means in, she, so in i'll look it up she yeah. researches like uh yeah um uh, the nature things nature things like milieu in the like uh, uh like environment friendly uh, technology yeah to create uh, design uh -huh. and also professor in uh, uh i wouldn't be able to say it right uh, mass mass massachusetts <laughs> you have uh, to massachusetts. Yeah, yeah wow i can't really pronounce it University. yeah and olafur ellison he also uh, he makes art like uh like environment yeah no yeah, his, uh, our, i know uh, elias uh, his uh, installations it's like about uh, environment and also technology and mm -hmm. art all together i find it very special you know you know the the really interesting thing that elias said i found uh, like um, he said, when I was making that sun, do you know a big sun in Tate's yeah. Modern? Tate, yeah. 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 Nice so he, when, when he was making that sun, he said, do you ever realize like a dream to have nature inside? So he wanted to, uh, to build a big, big, big sun because when you when you see a sun in the sky we are so small and so far from the sun mm -hmm. that we cannot actually like imagine how big that actually sun is and that's why he built a uh, just a uh, massive sun in in Tate Modern um, museum and uh, he said uh, when the people are entering inside and they get the nature they feel like they are outside and that that was just like really the videos they made uh from his work like people were like lay, laying on the on the ground like really on the beach or something it was so fascinating it's really cool mm -hmm. uh, also interesting that uh, some people reacted uh, very uh, positive so they were just like having a picnic or doing yoga or just relaxing there and for another ones it was like hell there so they were very they they got very uh, yeah they got stressed and like anxiety and he said also that 40 percent of his work is like his work and 60 percent is how people react of mm -hmm. of his work mm -hmm. I also find it interesting. And also with, all, with those, I find it a, a bit uh, funny when he was making uh, the uh, waterfall. You know that? Yeah. Uh, that one, like, waterfall. He was like, 
Hmm. I don't know. That water is like uh, falling, not like I want. <laughs> 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 Olaf, what the fuck? <laughs> where, where was it uh, exactly? Where it? It... On the in movie, the... on 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 yeah, the same movie. But in, is it in America or where, where was where did, Oh, where I don't, I don't remember that. I think in England, but I'm yeah. not sure. Okay, we will. I think it was in New York. But whatever. I, 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 I didn't see oh, the full maybe, movie. Um, maybe in New York. But I think it's also very funny that he tries to. That's again like culture versus nature, internal ver versus external, uh, emotional versus functional. It's like, oh, the water is not falling the way I want to. It's like he's trying to like aestheticize and culturalize nature of like that he's at the point of like. That water is not falling like I want to. That water is not doing what culture to me wants it to do. So I'm going to change it. It's very, <laughs> but also, uh, but, but also, very problematic approach of of uh, of approaching nature or something. Yeah, but also how he is doing. Uh, like he made uh, a small uh, introduction. Uh, how the colors work uh, with your eyes. He was like taking a paper and he put a, I think he put a, a red spot on it and he said, so look on this spot like for 10 minutes like this and then I'm gonna turn the, the pa page uh, into another um, side and it's black uh, and it's white and you just uh, look further and you will see what you see. And he turned and I was looking into that red spot. And then you, you can see, uh, if he turned uh, on, you can see uh, like uh, orange sun or something. Your eyes are so uh, into just, that red just, spot just. that you begin to see something else. But Actually, that trick knows everybody already from biology. Even on school, everybody gets that. But <laughs> it's so, so funny that Olafur is like, I'm going to show also this, okay? It's called... <laughs> it's my art. <laughs> it's my art. By my art. <laughs> okay, I have last three uh, questions for you. Uh, that we are asking all our um, people we are inviting invite to this podcast. So the first one is describe your studio in one sentence. Um, my studio, it's uh, my um, notebook and my pencil. Okay, that's. That's the one. That's I like this one. <laughs> it's very it's simple, like, and you can take it everywhere. I can yeah. take it everywhere. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not bothered by something. I just would you like to in the future cool. um, make something bigger and and more complex than just drawings? Yeah, I would like to do that. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, like we said, maybe installation or maybe like uh, 3D modeling and also animation. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, would you actually uh, like to have a studio in the yeah. future? I would like. Okay, maybe maybe we can look it up. Maybe we can fix that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. The second question is best book or documentary? It can also be a movie. Uh, I'm, I was very uh, impressed by this book about, uh, you gave me this book, huh? Marina Abramovic. Oh, it's changed my mind, I think. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think like Marina Abramovic, no, I changed my mind. <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, I mean that you, you know, we were talking about art, and then I told you the things, and you said like you always said like, oh no, you are not right. It's not like this. You are too, I don't know, bothered by something. And then I couldn't, I couldn't uh, understand what you mean actually, because for me art it was like more composition, like like you said here is. Um, 
if you if you look at this picture like okay here's maybe a too big uh, spot here I had to add something that, that that so it's like more about this weights and lines composition but when I read that book I realized how deep art is actually and then um, when you invited me to participate in this um, exhibition uh, silver is dot I was thinking about. Uh, uh, is it, it means skilled race dot. It means uh, uh, painting is dead. Painting is dead. So I thought, what can I, what can I uh, make? And then I think that that book helped me to think much more uh, wide, not only about the work, but also about the things what like behind this work yeah, yeah i don't know how to explain but it's really changed my way to to think about art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um yeah i mean sometime i read uh, abramovich uh, or her, her her book at the same time and it was like we really kind of got into this whole new mindset where um let it go was really one of the key phrases of like yeah, these things are happening and, and it's okay and uh, let it go. It's okay, it's like uh, Marina Abramovich said also. <laughs> ah, uh, Dylan was like, he called me like, I have an idea. We are gonna uh, uh, like close the door on the studio. We are gonna be there for like two days or something. And we are gonna do everything what I'm, uh, Marina Abramovich did, like, like watching to the uh, wall like for eight hours not eating not not uh how to say how is this in english blinking uh, blinking bl not blinking nothing like not thinking no you're nothing. allowed to blink are you allowed I to still, blink? Okay. i still have i i still have it somewhere yeah i still have like the whole plan that we yeah. were we going to do we should we should do maybe together May I join your few guys? You can join, of course. I'll I'll, okay, first, I'll, I'll first send you like the the list of things we were going to do, and maybe you'll be like, wait, 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 rules: no technology whatsoever, no communication whatsoever, no eating, no drinking, only after dark before going to sleep. Uh, when feeling faint, drink cola. That was one of the. That was something that Sandra wanted because she was like, I'm going to faint, so I need cola. Um, no checking the time. We do everything in slow motion, thinking about every action thoroughly. We perform a series of exercises from Abramovich's book, Unfinished Business, to prepare ourselves for the performance the next day, because the second day was going to be like eight hours of staring at each other. Uh, to prepare ourselves for the performance the next day, we go down the list, stopping when we don't have the energy and continuing when we have the energy again. We continue until we are sleepy and go to bed. The next day we host the performance. Oh my God. This is so crazy. Oh my God. We are going to do it. Yeah, yeah, we have to do it. Okay. Anyway, and then um, our last question for you, um, Marsha. Do you have any tips for young artists? Uh, tips for young artists? That's a difficult question, I find. Uh, wait. Accept yourself. Mm, exception yourself, yeah. And yeah, maybe uh, just, uh, yeah, okay. The things what I say, it's like very uh, but banal, but I think that, that it works. Just like, exception yourself and then, Durvan, how she? Dare to do. Uh, dare. Huh? There, just there. don't wait, don't cancel it. Yeah, no, it's sometimes, yeah, the, the obvious things are sometimes things we take for granted, but which aren't that easy. Like, believe in yourself, uh, don't stop doing it, um, keep going. It's like obvious things which are, I think, very hard for artists 
uh, especially yeah. young artists who are just starting out and trying to make it in this world just like us and and you have to drag yourself every day to make sure you keep going fake it till you make it by my art by my art and fake it till you make it i'm i swear to god somewhere we have to start making merchandise like the sweaters with like buy my art fake it till you make it and then like on the I'm back gonna, I'm gonna, but not something gonna, that you put once once in the washing machine and it's ruined <laughs> i have a museum piece in my closet somebody gave me a birthday gift it was like she it was it's really beautiful it's like a sweater with on the front it says buy my art and then on the back it says skylar and then uh, I wore it once, and then the same day she sent me a text of like, okay, don't uh, wash it because uh, it's going to be completely ruined. Look at mine. And I was like, yeah, okay, so I have a museum piece where I can't wear the sweater that she gave me for my birthday. So I'm still expecting a new one Sorry. that you can wash. This is really bullshit. I, I paid 20 euros for five, five uh, pages of this material you can use, and there was like, you can really wash this. I wash that completely ruined. I don't know why. We'll, we'll, we'll get a professional to handle our merchandising. Yeah. That's right. We're going to start a style of a Skylark style. Well, yeah, so this sweater it was very, very uh, nice. Everybody right? buy our sweater. OK, um, so I think that's all the questions we have for you. Thank you yeah. for joining us. You're Thank the you first guys. artist uh, of our next exhibition, Bookseller. Um, we can only put up this because we haven't announced any of the artists yet. We're going to do that soon. So this podcast will be posted after that. Um, I hope you had a great time with us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, I realized some things that maybe I even didn't know before. Yeah. Uh, an enlightening well, session with us. We're excited to work with you for the exhibition, to see you once again after uh, the COVID wave and, and we can all get back together. And now that Trump is out of office, we can also celebrate <laughs> that. And hopefully, finally, culture will find some way back into the world again instead of uh, violence and division. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, we are posting the works of our uh, artists all the time on Instagram. I'm gonna put the name down. And so just follow us. Thank yeah, you guys. Follow us on social and media. It's gonna be super fun. We're introducing all the artists. Um, <laughs> we're, uh, we're also posting about the previous exhibition, which we had really done. You can also go check it out on our website. It's like super amazing. We took so many good pictures. So you can still enjoy. Oh my God, we're so amazing. It's so much fun. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Uh, the next one is going to be amazing as well. We don't know what we're going to do yet, but as usual, it's just going to be one big car crash. We love you all. Hope you love us too. Um, peace, love, and kisses. Bye. 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 <laughs>